Selamat datang, selamat bergabung kembali bersama kami di hari terakhir dalam acara Huawei Connect 2020 Indonesia yang bertemakan New Value Together. Tentunya saya rasa Isa senang sekali yang akan memandu acara ini hingga kurang lebih 2 jam ke depan. Kemarin kita sudah membahas mengenai digital transformation, data center infrastructure, bagaimana kita dapat mengelola dan memperbaharui data center yang kita miliki agar tetap bisa terus beradaptasi dengan situasi seperti ini. Saya harap rekan-rekan bisa mendapatkan informasi yang sudah disampaikan dari para pembicara sebelumnya. Dan pada hari yang ketiga ini, kita akan membahas tema yaitu Digital Transformation Campus. Bagaimana transformasi digital mempengaruhi industri kampus di era sekarang ini. Sebelumnya, saya akan memperkenalkan para pembicara yang akan menyampaikan topik yang berkaitan dengan tema tersebut. Yang pertama adalah Mr. Kevin Hu, selaku Huawei President of Datacom Product. Berikutnya adalah Mr. Victor Lapian, selaku Huawei Asia Pacific Datacom CTO. Lalu berikutnya ada Mr. Al Zihan, selaku Huawei Senior Architect of CTO Office. Dan terakhir, ada Mr. Zhu Chow, selaku Huawei, VP Enterprise Transmission and Access. Dan jangan lupa, untuk hari ini akan ada pengundian Lucky Draw dengan hadiah yang menarik, yaitu satu unit Huawei P40 Pro. Caranya, pada akhir dari webinar ini akan ada questionnaire yang harus diisi. Bagi yang mengisi questionnaire tersebut, akan berkesempatan mendapatkan satu unit Huawei P40 Pro, pemenang akan diundi secara acak. Untuk mengisi kuesioner, silakan klik button survei yang ada di layar monitor Anda. Dan jangan khawatir, hari ini juga akan ada Huawei Band 4 yang akan dibagikan. Jumlah yang akan kami bagikan adalah 4 buah Huawei Band 4 kepada rekan-rekan yang menjawab pertanyaan dengan benar. Mau tahu bagaimana caranya? Caranya cukup mudah. Pertama, setiap sesi akan ada pertanyaan di bagian akhir. Bagi yang menjawab pertanyaan di kolom komentar dengan benar, akan mendapatkan satu buah Huawei Band 4. Setelah acara webinar selesai, rekan-rekan diharapkan untuk memposting poin apa yang rekan-rekan dapatkan di media sosial masing-masing. Bagi yang postnya mendapatkan lebih dari 66 likes, akan berkesempatan mendapatkan satu buah Huawei Band 4. Dan bagi yang mendapatkan lebih dari 200 likes, akan berkesempatan mendapatkan satu buah Huawei Watch GT2 Fashion. Silakan email bukti posnya ke agata.leonita.huawei.com untuk divalidasi. Validasi kami terima paling lambat 25 Oktober 2020. Bagaimana? Sudah cukup jelas ya syarat dan ketentuannya. Sebelum kita masuk ke topik yang pertama, kami persilahkan terlebih dahulu untuk Mr. Roger Chang, selaku CEO of Huawei Enterprise untuk memberikan kata sambutan. Please welcome Mr. Roger. Selamat pagi, everyone. Thank you for participating in Indonesia Huawei Connect 2020. This is Roger. I'm in charge Huawei Indonesia Enterprise Business. Today, in the third day of the event, we are going to show you exciting technology to accelerate digital transformation in campus network. In previous day, you already saw how far we can accelerate digital transformation in data center with future-proof technology such as software-defined network and combined with AI computing server and all flash storage. Today, we will share how to accelerate the foundation building block of IT infrastructure, campus network. Digital transformation in campus network starts with technology that we always use in our everyday life, Wi-Fi. Huawei already launched Wi-Fi product in latest standard high-speed Wi-Fi 6 with air-inch Wi-Fi 6. Huawei took the lead in deploying the industry-first enterprise classes Wi-Fi 6 network in Shanghai as early as 2018. Since then, Huawei air-inch Wi-Fi 6 have been to put large-scale commercial use across countries and regions such as Indonesia, Spain, Italy, Switzerland, etc. 
If you have been to several of our customer locations in Indonesia, whether several domestic and international airports, several hospitals, banks, even in manufacturing industries, and feels that you have very fast Wi-Fi, this is a possibility when you look up above, you will find Huawei access point ready to serve hundreds of clients in single AP. Today's enterprise network, especially medium to large campus networks, requires the agility to dynamically adapt and evolve with ever change needs of business applications. They also need centralized managed ability and higher integration capabilities with every other pieces of IT. With this new change, SD emerged into medium to large enterprise campus network to address platform network challenges as each enterprise experiments its own digital transformation and along unprecedented business agility. Hopefully, this three-day session can bring new value together in your organization for a better future. That's why Huawei Indonesia committed to bring digital to every person, home, organization for a fully connected, intelligent world. Thank you. Mr. Roger Chang, di sesi hari ini kita akan memperkenalkan Huawei Wi-Fi 6 kecepatan tinggi. Ini akan mengubah dari skala menengah menjadi skala besar dalam bisnis aplikasi serta adaptasi yang dinamis. Langsung saja kita memasuki sesi topik yang pertama yaitu Leading Intelligence IP Networks, Creating New Value Together yang akan dibawakan oleh Mr. Kevin Hu. Please welcome Mr. Kevin Hu. Uh, dear friends, on site and online, good afternoon. I wonder whether you still remember last year at the HC 2019 in Shanghai when our new products were launched. You know, I was wondering what you would expect me to launch this year. Last year at the HC, we launched the uh, three-tier or three-layer architecture for s intelligent network, as well as a three-layer architecture for security. After making such launches, I realized that in uh, 2018 we launched the intent-driven network. Then last year, it was a three-layer architecture that was launched. So today, we would like to uh, launch the intelligent IP networks. For that. We have been talking about the topic for three years, so we are not only emphasizing important topic three times, but also three years. Only with three years of dedication can we do right things right. At this special moment, friends join us from on-site and online. I appreciate so much the support you have given us in the past year and decade. Our products and solutions have served many verticals and users. For example, we support 10 out of the top, uh, 6 out of top 10 uh, banks and uh, also so many others in other sectors. So for example, uh, 228 out of the Fortune 500 companies. So after serving them, we have also accumulated a lot of expertise in serving 
the various users. Uh, last year, we are not only doing paperwork for intelligent network, but also we've done a lot of things on the ground. Since September last year, we launched a three-layer architecture, the cloud-based and intelligent NCE platform. We also launched the intelligent firewalls exactly the same time last year. Over the past year, more than 1,000 intelligent firewalls have been deployed worldwide. In February, we launched the AI-based Wi-Fi L engine series. Wi-Fi 6 was so well received in the market. In this compound, you can seamlessly experience our Wi-Fi. Huawei Connect 2020 has uh, been served with the full coverage of Wi-Fi 6. Uh, in July, we actually launched the intelligent loss, loss-free or lossless switches. What makes us different is the following. E35 uh, solution also focuses on uh, this. In August, we launched the uh, routers for enterprises, uh, cloud-based uh, intelligent dispatching. This is what we have done over the past year. Looking into the future, the era of uh, cloud, where everything is intelligently connected, and when the whole industry is transforming, the in data communication as the cornerstone is moving into new directions. Where is it going? So many more devices are connected. The CAGR is 30% for the number of new devices connected. But the O&M headcount is a flat. In data network, our data engineers are overwhelmed. In data centers, the maintenance engineers uh, tend to be complained by the business users. When business is down, they will you know, find them as skip goes. So a lot of challenges have been encountered. How can we resolve them? From the industry perspective, we believe that IP network seems to be not subject to generations, but actually there, are, there is a clear line of generations in the path of evolution. The core concept of IP cannot uh, be separated from the Internet ISO and the separation of business from network are the ideas that are constraining us. All these ideas came from the Internet. However, in the data communication network, Internet is not the only one. Tens of millions of base stations have been connected to IP networks. Hundreds of millions of users have been connected to Internet. And numerous enterprises have been connected to Internet. The number of nodes has exceeded billions on the Internet. And the intelligent IP network is totally different by architecture. The Internet is a flat in structure uh, to uh, deliver the accessibility of mails and communication in the context of nuclear cold war. So how can we actually provide the accessibility uh, for things like the online storage uh, or the in the uh, intelligent uh, network sensing is required? How can we deliver that, especially at the terminal site? And this wasn't conceived when the internet was designed. Given such needs of new services, we have uh, you know, categorized the, the IP into of, uh, three phases. The first one is IPv4, it's about the accessibility, and then the LPL else about the city level networks. It actually can host the uh, traffic engineering and QoS. The network has become bigger and more complex at that stage. Today, we have come to a stage where things got connected based on IPv6 plus and intelligent IP, the two attributes of the network. IPv6 was proposed 10 years ago. It only resolved the 
issue of addresses. So it is hugely difficult to deploy. Users have little incentive to resolve the address problem for IPv6. With the new context of Internet in control forward and many other layers, we have found IPv6 to be incomplete. Therefore, we have developed a new control uh, forward and uh, management concept for IPv6 so that IPv6 can work together with cloud. As I said, SDN cannot be used well for IPv6. The core problem is not the insufficient software but insufficient protocol support. So in terms of SDN application, a lot of things have been done in Huawei. What I would like to share with you is about this. Is the I one two three four X? So this is what Huawei has been contemplating. In terms of a uh, one, the uh, IP is about an intelligent IP network requires an intelligence, and the IP network can also better enable the intelligent world. So the business of the IP world can be actually brought to the numerous things at the terminal side to support the intelligent network. We also need the right hardware. Can the cars that you purchase today support autonomous driving? No, because there are no sensors, light, no LiDAR on your car. So your car cannot be intelligent enough to accommodate autonomous driving. And uh, likewise, software is sufficient. It's insufficient. The operating system is totally different between autonomously driven vehicles and the normal vehicles. So Huawei has been preparing ourselves for the intelligent world from both hardware and software. That is about the two. Three, architecture is different. Traditional network is symmetrical. As a uh, basic model, uh, physical uh, link, transmission, and conversation layers are the purely model. It is a, a model based on ports and models. So in the cloud age, we need to redesign the management in the forward planes and the maintenance planes. So we need to design a new structure from a totally new perspective. That is why we launched a three-layer, our three-plane architecture last year. The four is about the four engines that we have discussed extensively last year. X is the highlight today. We would like to join our industrial partners and to co-develop competitive industrial solutions. From both hardware and software, we have the development capabilities. How can we better enable the users in finance, transport, education, energy, and other sectors, and create more values from the more scenarios that we can support? That is about one, two, three, four X that I would like to interpret. Moving on to the next part. For the hardware, what is the core? In the IP network, there are several attributes. What we pr provide is connectivity. It's about bandwidth, traffic, latency, jittering, packet losses, and topography and uh, security. These are the six dimensions of the network. What makes us different from others? Our engineers spend every day thinking about this. This is like the tireless pursuit to mount the summit of Chomolama. So 400 GD is supported. This is a new era that we are entering. We have already started our shipment of the single port 400 G and uh, commercialized it in the backbone network in China for boxes to uh, support the numerous scenarios in power banking and the other sectors who are still using the uh, heritage uh, or they are, they are still using the old ports. So we can actually protect our investment to the maximum extent. For hardware, we are actually increasing the uh, acceleration engine and the big data processing. So all of them require upgraded hardware. Moving on to software, I trust that none of you have watched this. The solution is the following. By the end of the year, 
we will uh, launch this new software system, which is named as Yunsha. It is a kind of uh, tree that can live for thousands of years, and generation after generation, year on year, it will evolve endlessly. The same is true for software architecture. You know, it is a, such a modular structure. For different scenarios, the modules can be disinstalled. So it is essentially a derivative of Linux. We can open up our database and containers. On this Yunshan OS, our partners can develop edge intelligence and industrial applications. This is a major breakthrough in the industry. And the software work is very challenging. But in our switches and firewalls, the software has been commercialized. And this next year, our full product portfolio will support Yunshan. And you can actually load it per your need. If you don't, do not use OPS, you can only select to load what you need. And that wasn't possible for the old software. This is a breakthrough for our software. We can quickly support the future needs, integration, and in-depth development. It has also integrated various AI acceleration engines. And we provide more than 400 APN capabilities. So we provide equipment management, as well as uh, the course and uh, management capabilities and AI capabilities. The third one is the uh, three-layer architecture. I discussed this last year. This year, we further upgraded this architecture, particularly on the top, autonomous uh, driving or the intelligent operation and the maintenance. We have uh, made breakthrough for knowledge graph, uh, learning, and um, big data. So we made huge strides thanks to our capabilities. And that is to achieve the real AI. Once you put equipment in a scenario, you know the accuracy rate will rise uh, by the first, second, and third months. The first months, 80% accurate. And without intervention, in the second months, 90%. Third months, 95 percent. That is the true AI capability. That means the AI can learn without intervention or expert experience. The second upgrade is the intelligent experience. We can holistically support the um, merge between uh, cloud and the network. So the cloud and the network can call on each other, and the uh, network calling network. So they can be all connected in the era of cloud. How about the uh, four engines? This first is the NCE platform. That is the network control engine. This is a software, not a hardware. It is based on clouded, cloudified architecture. The upgrade provides us the following. The first one is the uh, knowledge graph inside and uh, neural network inside. So these are breakthroughs in the industry as well. Look at other vendors. None of them offer the same functionality. So we are the pioneer in the industry in terms of uh, embedding these two. However, the is set, but the know-how is how to use it. That is hugely complex with the capability and the engine. For customers, we have also introduced the upgrade of North Northbound AOC programming framework. Many colleagues and friends may know it, programmable software, a programmable a network. What is it? Is it true that a network is programmable as long as modules can be supported? Actually, you need to schedule um, your network and verify your network based on intent. So based on LC engine, we have made new attempts. And that engine has been open to developers, especially our partners. If you can do some development, very simple development, based on uh, OC uh, program, programming hard, uh, framework, you can use it. Next one is uh, the southbound. We have encountered a lot of friends 
who raised the requirements to us, whether NCE managed third-party devices, then we understood that this was a very urgent matter because of the increased number of online de or connected devices. We are going to add this uh, to our network. So with our system, you will be able to manage all devices from different parties. So 1,500 sets have been deployed uh, on NCE and uh, also 1,000 for campuses and uh, uh, 1,000 uh, for the um, broad domains. So we have entered the age of uh, scaled deployment. Can we use the SDN? Yes, indeed. There can be uh, some configuration inconsistency uh, or legacy of, but we have resolved them. When you choose SDN, SDN seems alike, uh, but is it a truly SDN, SDN ready for commercialization? Then you need to check those numbers. For campus, over the past year, Wi-Fi 6 has been, you know, recognized to be very powerful. Uh, we can actually provide uh, so many different kinds of signals. That means we provide more signals to you. And we also introduce intelligent capability to the Wi-Fi network. So every day, uh, fine-tuning is done until the optimal state is achieved. So that is the magic of AI. In the past year, Forrester, Gartner, and others have highly rated our solution. In Wi-Fi network, what we can achieve is that we can manage uh, 200,000 devices or users at the same time by a cloud-based uh, management operation is on. Some of our users uh, may have uh, 300,000 devices in SDN, and we can also deliver that. In Wi-Fi network, we are not only managing one box, but also providing solution. In terms of a campus network, we are clearly aware of the complexity of the scenarios. What you buy is the boxes and boxes that are bo pieced together on those firewalls, switches, and so on and so forth. But to develop a scenario, it is highly complicated. We have launched a new solution for intelligent campus. With one network, everything is connected. Southbound, all the uh, ports and um, optical fibers can be connected. Here, you can see several bags or sacks. Like one is a small Wi-Fi plus a switch, middle size. Uh, with AR added to that, in the large uh, bags or the large canvases, more switches and a firewall can be uh, put in. So we can do cloud management for all of them as long as you can do some standardized uh, configuration, uh, like 10, 100, 1,000 uh, users, and then you put them together as packages. The one stop solution can be available, but that is not enough. In Wi-Fi, there is an uh, issue of uh, one click to join the cloud. Sometimes you have to go uh, through the internet because of the remote distance of the campus. So we need to make one jump and then enter the cloud. The SD-1 technology can do that. So that is a better solution to have one jump to enter the cloud. The next one is the unified management. So this year, in terms of campus solutions, we have made enormous improvements and the breakthroughs. The next one is about the data center. You know very well about it. Over the past year, we have upgraded the support up to the 400 GE level and introduced the knowledge graph. The uh, fault uh, diagnosis rate is as high as 98 percent. Through the in Ethernet, we can also replace FC storage seamlessly. So the F solution is commercializable. With the Ethernet, FC computing network can be all turned into one network. The bandwidth can be increased by, by at least uh, 10 times. After discussing the unified network, I would like to move on to the fourth highlight. That is the uh, uh, multi-cloud ser service. 
the companies have public and private uh, clouds, 50 to 50, and there are also multi-vendors of even public clouds. So we can actually use one network to support multiple clouds, up to 10 clouds. So in the data center network, in terms of DN deployment, we have deployed uh, 1,500 iMasters CNEs and 400 GE has been also commercialized. The third is about the uh, cloud WAN. Uh, WAN is about making cloud services at fingertips in both uh, villages, counties, and uh, outlets. Access to cloud requires WAN connections. At the core of WAN is to have the integration of uh, cloud and network, so you don't need human intervention then end-to-end -end automation is possible. In the WAN, 400 GE is also supported, and certainty is also supported, especially for industrial use. In Nanjing, we uh, launched a, a certain a network. The jittering is only plus minus 15 microseconds for a distance of 2,000 kilometers. And the public, the one may penetrate others, so it is important to make this secure. And the next one is unsupervised learning of AI. There are 80,000 KPIs that can actually deliver this. So, in the history of uh, IP, that is a huge progress for slicing SL6. You know, commercialization has a uh, started. Many customers are asking whether it is commercializable. But that means that you don't know our latest updates. The three top Chinese carriers and the foreign customers have already rolled it out. They know immediately that this is good because it can actually coordinate the cloud and the network. Finally, about the security. We have a complete suite of security solutions because security is the top priority of the users, as you know. Uh, tomorrow is a special day, and you know it is a security day, and we actually uh, do 96 percent of the threat detection rate, and that is the top of the at least the top three in the industry. So uh, that is 96%. We are the first one in China that can deliver more than 90% of the threat detection rate. So the next is a closed cycle. After you find the detect the uh, threats, so you cannot unplug the network. What you can do is the following. So the closure can be done uh, after the threat is detected. And then the 4.8 T level firewall has been also uh, launched. So many people waited for this. So you need a huge firewall to protect the entire environment. And for the industries, we have also developed a solution. So I'm going to be very brief, although you may be very interested. The government is actually introducing one network for all public services and uh, city administration. But the government network used to be based on LAN. But how can we use one cloud, one platform, and one network to deliver a complete e-governance and e-government? Actually, we can use cloud plus one to deliver that. The city, uh, so 83% of the public services can be provided uh, online, end to end. And there has been 21 provincial e-governance network, which is still growing in China. In the financial industry, you know, customers use multiple clouds. So for new O&M network and architecture, how can we support the distributed multi-centers? Financial institutions are leading the way in this regard. In commercial banks, our applications are numerous. In education, the most important one is the need to cope with the impact of the pandemic. In many schools, social distancing of 1 or 1 1.5 meters is administered. Students take lessons in dormitory, so need, they need a better Wi-Fi to support that. Later, Professor Hu of uh, Southeast University will give you more details. 
for research and uh, education, the data centers need to be also connected. In airports, you have heard the presentation from the Shenzhen Airport. You can tell that actually we actually develop the Wi-Fi network for them for security uh, experience and o &M, we have uh, achieved a good performance. The Beijing Capital Airport is also very keen on doing that. So we are actually co-innovating with Shenzhen Airports and other customers for healthcare. The uh, mobile and uh, remote medicine are important. So how healthcare industry is moving to cloud so as to connect the users with high quality medical resources for rapid uh, diagnosis, slicing is needed, and um, transfusion, and uh, wearable devices of the elderly users all need to be connected. There are numerous healthcare-related uh, solutions. I'm open to discuss them with you on an offline one-on-one -on -one basis. Finally, let's review this. For intelligent IP network, we have talked about the one, two, three, four. One, the intelligent IP network. We have improved the I hardware and the software by re-engineering. And the two, uh, we have actually uh, upgraded the hardware and the software and platforms in support of intelligent IP. Uh, and the intelligent IP capabilities will be open to more partners so that more developers will be able to enable the numerous users. Mr. Kevin Hu for the presentation bahwa intelligent IP network sudah berkembang baik itu dari software maupun hardware, platform dan Huawei membuka kerjasama dengan partner-partner untuk melengkapi kebutuhan dari user yang begitu banyak. Selanjutnya saya persilahkan Mr. Victor Lapian untuk mempresentasikan tentang topik Accelerate Digital Transformation in Wi-Fi 6 Era. Please welcome Mr. Victor Lapian. Selamat datang di Huawei Connect Indonesia 2020 bersama saya Victor Lapian, CTO dari Asia Pacific Data Communication Enterprise Business Group dari Huawei. Di section ini saya mau sharing tentang how to accelerate digital transformation in Wi-Fi 6 era. Dalam transformasi digital dari enterprise perusahaan, Wi-Fi merupakan fondasi yang sangat penting pada IT construction. Hanya 16% enterprise yang sukses dalam transformasi digital berdasarkan report dari Forbes dan 44% leader dari bisnis, leader dari perusahaan percaya kekurangan digital skill dari karyawannya adalah key obstacle dari transformasi digital. Bagaimana dengan enterprise yang sukses dalam transformasi digital mereka? Hampir semua dari mereka mengaplikasikan learning organization, meningkatkan digital skill dari setiap karyawannya. Efficient collaboration, untuk komunikasi yang cepat dan pengambilan keputusan yang cepat dan tepat. Dan yang terakhir, faster time to market, adaptasi dengan kebutuhan market yang sangat tanggap dan cepat dan tepat. Network atau jaringan adalah fondasi dari semua inisiatif tersebut, dipercaya bahwa jaringan all wireless bersama IoT dan menggunakan AI sistem di semua inovasi yang mereka jalankan merupakan kunci sukses dari transformasi digital perusahaan. Di slide ini kita bisa melihat semua aplikasi-aplikasi baru pendukung transformasi digital dari perusahaan. Tiga hal yang diperlukan untuk mendukung aplikasi-aplikasi ini dari sisi network perspektif. Yang pertama, high capacity. Massive connection, 
dan low latency. Wi-Fi 6 memecahkan masalah daripada Wi-Fi 5 sebelumnya. Pada roaming, latency, dan continuous networking pada aplikasi-aplikasi tradisional yang menggunakan Wi-Fi. Selain itu, Wi-Fi 6 mendukung semua requirement yang dibutuhkan oleh aplikasi-aplikasi baru pendukung transformasi digital. Sekarang saya memberikan beberapa ilustrasi tentang bagaimana Huawei Wi-Fi 6 mentransform enterprise dan juga meredefine benchmark dari industri Wi-Fi saat ini. Mulai dari bagaimana Wi-Fi 6 mentransform workspace atau ruangan kerja atau office area, open office area, 4K desktop video conference, VDI collaborative drawing, dan office service lainnya terus berkembang semakin canggih saat ini. Sayangnya, Wi-Fi 5 tak dapat menangani kebutuhan bandwidth, kebutuhan latency, dan banyaknya koneksi ke jaringan di saat yang bersamaan. Wi-Fi 6, Huawei Wi-Fi 6 mendukung 10 gigabit per second bandwidth dan latensi di bawah 10 milisecond. Semua requirement baru dari open office area tersebut dapat dipenuhi dengan Wi-Fi 6. Kemudian kita menuju ke mobile office area. Di mobile office area, user yang mobile menggunakan tablet, smartphone saat melakukan konferensi panggilan audio atau video. Saat user tersebut berpindah, roaming latency bisa mencapai 50 milisecond. Hasilnya, konferensi yang sedang berjalan terganggu, kualitasnya bisa saja putus dan tak ada sinkronisasi antara audio dan video. Selain itu, Wi-Fi 5 lebih riskan dengan area blind spot. Contohnya dekat dengan jendela. Saat user berada di area ini, video akan mudah sekali terputus. Dengan Wi-Fi 6, Huawei Smart Radio mendukung latensi yang sangat rendah dan menjamin kontinuitas layanan tanpa gangguan saat roaming terjadi. Smart antena dari Huawei akan mengikuti kemana user bergerak atau berpindah. Hasilnya, coverage area akan lebih besar 20%, menjamin blind spot free coverage tanpa adanya gangguan. layanan Wi-Fi. Sekarang kita menuju ke intelligent conference room okay? atau ruangan conference yang pintar. Selamat datang di intelligent conference room. Ruangan seperti ini akan mendeteksi pergerakan dari user, mengatur lampu penerangan, air conditioning, layar TV, dan proyektor sampai sistem telepresence. Wi-Fi dan IoT mengautomatisasi semua sistem tersebut sampai ruangan siap digunakan untuk meeting. Limitasi Wi-Fi 5 untuk menyediakan bandwidth dan latensi yang cukup tak mampu untuk mendukung layanan office seperti interaksi tiga layar dalam ruangan konferensi. Wi-Fi 6R Engine 100 Mbps per user dengan latency di bawah 10 ms menjamin tak adanya frame freezing saat interaksi tiga layar. Pada jaringan Wi-Fi 5, bandwidth tak dapat mendukung koneksi banyak kendaraan. Sekarang kita lihat bagaimana Wi-Fi 6 mentransform production area ataupun manufacture area. Mulai dari intelligent production line. Pada jaringan Wi-Fi 5, bandwidth tak dapat mendukung koneksi banyak kendaraan atau mobil produksi yang menjalani vision quality detection secara bersamaan. Huawei Wi-Fi 6 mendukung performa dua kali lebih tinggi dari rata-rata industri Wi-Fi 6. Dengan ini dapat mendukung deteksi multiple kendaraan secara bersamaan dari multiple industrial vision camera. dan meningkatkan efisiensi deteksi kualitas dari produk kendaraan tersebut. Instalasi software pada kendaraan. Dengan Wi-Fi 5, produksi rata-rata hanya bisa menginstal 14 kendaraan dalam 30 menit. Dengan Huawei Wi-Fi 6, mereka dapat melakukannya hanya dalam 4 menit. Dengan Wi-Fi 5, rata-rata paket loss sekitar 0,4 persen. Sekarang kita lihat tentang unmanned warehouse atau otomasi pada warehouse. Dengan Wi-Fi 5, rata-rata paket loss sekitar 0,4 persen. Saat roaming, 
Automated Guided Vehicles terganggu mengakibatkan efisiensi yang sangat rendah dengan Huawei Y56 Smart Radio Roaming Zero Packet Loss menjamin AGV akan bekerja dengan lancar dan efisien sesuai dengan tujuannya mengautomasi daripada warehouse tersebut. Ruangan training berbasis AR, okay. AR based augmented reality um, training. Wi-Fi 5 kurang dapat mendukung AR assisted training untuk banyak user. Dengan Wi-Fi 6, tak ada masalah untuk mendukung AR assisted training dengan 20 user. Setiap user dijamin mendapatkan bandwidth lebih dari 60 Mbps dan latensi di bawah 10 ms. Sekarang kita lihat transformasi di layanan publik. Seperti di airport dan layanan publik lainnya. VIP launch di airport. Performa jaringan Wi-Fi 5 kurang dapat menggaransi user VIP mendapatkan high quality network experience. Dengan Wi-Fi 6, 100 megabit per second di seluruh coverage area, high quality service experience bisa dijamin untuk VIP user dan common user lainnya. Sekarang kita menuju ke airport check-in area. Dengan jaringan Wi-Fi 5, kualitas sinyal di beberapa area sangat rendah. Latensi saat roaming saat sangat tinggi mengakibatkan frame freezing saat mereka melakukan panggilan video ataupun audio. Kebanyakan bahkan sampai harus autentikasi Wi-Fi lagi. Teknologi smart antena dari Huawei yang mengikuti user memperluas area coverage sampai 20%. Huawei Smart Radio menjamin latensi yang sangat rendah, kontinuitas layanan, dan uncompromised experience di saat roaming. Menjamin tak ada blind spot dan interupsi layanan pada jaringan di airport check-in hall. Bagaimana dengan launch keberangkatan atau departure hall? Oke. Okay. Alright. Screen untuk advertising dideploy di mana-mana bersamaan dengan lalu lalang ratusan atau bahkan ribuan penumpang yang terkoneksi Wi-Fi. Jaringan Wi-Fi 5 yang umumnya dibatasi 4 Mbps sangat mempengaruhi efisiensi update dari iklan-iklan yang ditampilkan digital signage ataupun the semua screen yang dideploy. Dengan Wi-Fi 6, setiap 8K display advertising screen mendapat 100 Mbps bandwidth dan menjamin efisiensi periklanan ataupun signage digital di airport. Bagaimana dengan duty free shop? Label harga elektronik yang menggunakan jaringan IoT menginterferensi satu sama lain dengan jaringan Wi-Fi. Hasilnya, success rate dari ESL tersebut lebih rendah dari 70%. Dengan Huawei Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi IoT Convergence dapat dipenuhi sehingga interferensi dapat hilang di antara IoT dan Wi-Fi network. Huawei All Wireless Digital Campus merupakan fondasi dari suksesnya transformasi digital dari Huawei sendiri. 3 SSID worldwide, efisiensi kerja naik 30% dan 80% cabling dihilangkan dari jaringan Huawei IT. Jaringan Huawei menghandle 2,8 juta email per hari. 80 ribu conference per hari, 200 ribu lebih warehouse operation per hari yang harus diproses, 600 lebih aplikasi dijalankan di 170 negara, 1000 lebih office digunakan 180 ribu karyawan dengan 400 ribu terminal. Ini membuktikan suksesnya transformasi digital dari Huawei sendiri. Ini sharing dari saya, terima kasih atas waktu dan perhatiannya. Dan let's create new value together with Huawei.
Mr. Victor Lapian for the presentation. Jadi sekarang kita sudah tahu ya bagaimana mengakselerasikan dan mengoptimalkan transformasi digital saat ini. Dan era Wi-Fi 6 ini akan memperbaiki masalah-masalah Wi-Fi sebelumnya. Wi-Fi 6 ini juga memiliki latensi yang rendah, konektivitas tinggi, dan jaringan yang lebih luas. Semoga informasi ini bisa bermanfaat bagi rekan-rekan sekalian. Bicara mengenai kampus, konektivitas adalah garis keturunan dari industri kampus yang membawa data dan instruksi. Oleh karena itu, ini adalah landasan industri internet dan ini sangat penting. Untuk itu, kami persilahkan Mr. Elvihan untuk membawakan topik tentang Going Digital Drives, Huawei's Campus, Transformation for Intelligent Manufacturing. Please welcome Mr. Elvihan. Hello and welcome to Huawei IP Club. The topic of my presentation is Going Digital Drives Huawei's Campus Transformation for Intelligent Manufacturing. When we talk about digital manufacturing, industrial internet is often mentioned. The industrial internet consists of three layers, device, connectivity, and application or platform. Many people focus on application or platform layer. There are many great sessions this time on applications and platform because they directly relate to enterprise production and revenue. However, my presentation today will focus on the connectivity layer that connects the physical and digital worlds and enables industrial intelligence. Industrial campus network usually includes intranet and extranet. A typical factory intranet often includes industrial control, production, office, and security networks using many different technologies, such as 5G, Wi-Fi, TSN, MBIoT, industrial bus, etc. Connectivity is the bloodline of an industrial campus, carrying data and instructions. Therefore, it is the cornerstone of industrial internet. Its quality has a direct impact on platform and applications. We are entering a digital era. Digitalization requires higher efficiency and more applications, which brings higher expectations on the network. Manufacturing digitalization requires many things, particularly in the following four areas. Office, processing and production, warehousing and logistics, and production monitoring. Enterprise digital transformation has hit the fast lane. We see faster adoption of IoT, cloud, and intelligence. If we compare an enterprise to a human body, then cloud and AI is the brain, IoT the sense organs, and network, the nervous system that connects the brain with all other organs. According to GIV report, by 2025, there will be 100 billion IoT endpoints, most of which for commercial use. These IoT devices now use different protocols. How to achieve unified network access? How to apply different access policies for these endpoints? This is the first challenge. By 2025, all enterprises will adopt cloud, and 85% of enterprise applications will be cloud-based. Applications have different requirements to latency, bandwidth, and QoS. How can the network provide business experience assurance? This is the second challenge. The third challenge is that as the number of network devices and applications go up, ONM becomes more and more complex. How to use AI to improve ONM efficiency? We at Huawei believe that the networks need to keep up and make changes to support digitalization of enterprises, and particularly manufacturing companies. Then what changes are needed to address these challenges? Based on our experience over the years from many projects, we believe that the future enterprise network should have three features, supercapacity, intelligent connectivity, and smart OMM. First, supercapacity. We need wider and smarter network pipes. We had 4G and Wi-Fi 5. Now we have 5G and Wi-Fi 6. 
with four times the bandwidth and four times the concurrency. It's not enough to be wider. We also need unified standards so that we can connect all endpoints to one network quickly with transparent, secure access and truly realize plug-and-play experience. Second, intelligent connectivity. In the past, we connected things, but in the future, we need to provide differentiated assurance for campus services, including video, email, audio, and new applications like VR and AR. How to use network slicing to identify the services and guarantee their experience? How to classify services and apply the right policies? We also need to classify people into VIP and non-VIP users. Their security policies should be different. All these require intelligent connectivity to build truly application and experience-driven campuses. Third, intelligent OMM. How to make the management system, the brain of the campus, smarter? Otherwise, when there is a fault, it may take well over a day to resolve it manually, depending on experience. But with big data and AI, we can reduce troubleshooting time from days to minutes. This saves manual workload. Our goal is to ultimately achieve L5 autonomous, autonomous driving networks. Network is the foundation to all sectors. It empowers them and bridges the physical and digital worlds. It is also the enabler of industrial intelligence. Next, I will sh use Huawei's factory at Songshan Lake campus as a case study to share with you how Huawei built intelligent IP networks in an industrial campus. There are several key elements, IoT, cutting cords to go wireless, AOI, automated upgrade, HUV, PLC, and ARVR. The goal is to realize flexible manufacturing, improve production efficiency and speed, implement intelligent quality inspection, and improve inspection accuracy. Before we go into the case study, let's do a refresher on the ICD production process. From component manufacturing to SMT, service mounting technology, to soldering, board testing, and device assembly and test. This is a complete process. Throughout the process, we have very strict requirements on the production environment, such as ESD, electrostatic discharge, lighting, temperature, and humidity. So we have many IoT applications like BEMS because environment monitoring is crucial. In terms of manufacturing technologies, Huawei has built up cutting-edge technologies throughout the process, from warehousing to, and distribution and component board, module, and device manufacturing. We've used many new technologies in these steps. For instance, in warehousing and distribution, automated loading and unloading, sorting and picking, and HEV distribution are widely used, improving efficiency and reducing manual work. Huawei has accumulated high-end manufacturing technologies, such as high-precision wire bonding for optical components, BSOB, automated laser coupling soldering. But all these technologies require a network foundation with high reliability and large bandwidth, especially as we transform to wireless networks. Huawei has invested heavily in research and implementation of automation technologies and built an automated manufacturing system featuring automated production, material distribution, and production management, and IT-based manufacturing. In the future, we want to turn our experience into replicable solutions of intelligent and automated manufacturing to implement in our production facilities worldwide. All of these capabilities rely on a powerful network. Next, let's take a look at the automation practices in warehouse, PCBA, module, and FAT. First, warehousing. The Songshan Lake automated warehouse was put into use in October 2012. 
With many advanced technologies, the sorting center offers raw material receiving, storage, sorting, offset, and distribution services. It is an integrated logistics center. In PCBA, there is a closed-loop information system with automated production scheduling, cloud-based testing, platform-based testing, and intelligent assembly. One person can operate multiple machines. In production of modules with intelligent assembly and lean design, we can reduce manpower, relieve operator burden, and improve efficiency and quality. Wi-Fi 6 has already been deployed in Huawei's own factory. We have a few use cases to share with you. The first one is intelligent AOI, automated optical inspection. AI-based machine vision is often applied in quality inspection. Deploying campus networks for manufacturing OT systems can help improve production efficiency, enable flexible manufacturing, and reduce CAPEX and maintenance costs. Now, consumer products are rolled out at an ever faster pace. One smartphone factory may produce dozens of models a year. This requires on-demand and flexible manufacturing. Currently, most production equipment is using wireless, sorry, wired network. Reorganizing the production line means rewiring and recommissioning. Therefore, going wireless is the best way forward. Another change is computing resource pooling. Local computing resources need to be pooled and centrally managed in HDC in the shop floor. With wireless connection and local computing, each AOI equipment requires hundreds of Mbps uplink rate and zero packet loss. When we learned about such high density and large uplink throughput scenario, we wanted to build a Wi-Fi 6 network to meet these requirements. To this end, we worked with our partner and designed a Wi-Fi 6 CPE that supports over 800 Mbps throughput. It supports all the industrial interfaces and uses dual-fed selective receiving technology to ensure high reliability. With two wireless links, it can ensure zero packet loss. After going wireless, the factory can reorganize production line in 30 minutes instead of eight hours, and computing resource pooling reduced costs and improved maintenance efficiency. As I'm sure you know, most APs are connected to PoE switch. The cables transmit data and supplies power at the same time. But in the factory, APs are usually mounted on ceiling. A shop floor has an area of thousands of square meters or larger and need dozens if not hundreds of APs. Often, APs are placed over 100 meters from switch. In this case, can we use optical fiber? Well, it does offer longer transmission dis distance, but it cannot supply power, and it's quite complicated to uh, put up new power supply in the factory. To address this problem, we designed a hybrid cable combining the best of both worlds. According to Tolly testing, the hybrid cable can support PoE++ at 300 meters and up to 10 Gbps rate, which means there is no need to replace cables for 10 years, saving investment. The third use case is related to device automated upgrade. On the smartphone production line, phones are usually upgraded twice, first to upgrade to test version second time to upgrade to official release. We used to use USB drives to upgrade each phone manually. If the official release changes, we will need to change all the USB drives, which is prone to error. We wanted to find a way to upgrade the phones wirelessly. The new Huawei handsets support Wi-Fi 6 and 160 MHz frequency bandwidth. We use our high-end 8x8 MU MIMO Wi-Fi 6 AP and 160 MHz frequency bandwidth for fast speed. And we use shielded box to avoid interference. When the version upgrade is completed, it will then be passed on to testing automatically. Another use case is AGV. 
AGVs are now widely used in manufacturing and logistics. It needs to communicate with the control station in real time to report its status and receive instructions. If the connection is down, it will stop and wait until it receives instruction again. This connection often happens when AGV is roaming from AP to AP, because traditional Wi-Fi cannot avoid packet loss during roaming. To address this issue, we brought the handover mechanism in cellular network to WLAN, so the campus network can connect the AGVs, predict the direction that the AGV is roaming to, and direct it towards the next AP. And during roaming, the network caches the instruction data to be sent to AGV and replay it when the AGV has roamed to another AP successfully to avoid any packet loss. With the collaboration between network and devices and the module in the AGVs, roaming success rate is up by over 50 percent and the efficiency per unit of area up by 30 percent. We're also planning to leverage the wide coverage of 5G to achieve synergy between 5G and Wi-Fi 6. This way, AGVs can move move in a larger area and roam seamlessly. In our factory, PLC is also going wireless. RFID-based material recognition and asset labeling and environment sensors all require wireless connectivity. In the shop floor, over 1,600 IoT devices need to be connected, and they may use different IoT protocols. It's not realistic to build one network for each protocol. Therefore, we decided to use Wi-Fi and IoT convergent solution. Huawei Wi-Fi 6 AP supports built-in or external IoT cards, and many IoT protocols, such as Bluetooth, RFID, and ZigBee. With iMaster NCE as the unified network management platform, we can connect many IoT devices, identify the types of device, and apply corresponding access control policies. We also provide open APIs for third-party systems. Now in Huawei Songshan Lake automated production line, a phone is rolled out every 20 seconds and an AP every 45 seconds. The digital transformation substantially improved production efficiency but it also makes wireless network critical. Any network failure could disrupt in production. We need 24-7 network assurance. Apart from good reliability and redundancy design, we also use AI technologies for predictive maintenance, quick fault location, and root cause analysis. Due to time limit, I could only share with you a small part of our innovations in manufacturing. We provide end-to-end -end enterprise network solutions from access to core to DC and WAN. We are committed to working with industry partners to unleash the potential of connectivity to better serve the manufacturing industry. Thank you for listening. Mr. Elvihan untuk penjelasannya. Transformasi digital secara substansial telah meningkatkan efisiensi produksi dan itu juga membuat jaringan nirkabel menjadi penting. Sebelum kita lanjutkan ke topik berikutnya, saya akan ingatkan kembali hari ini di akhir acara akan ada pengundian Lucky Draw untuk mendapatkan hadiah yaitu satu unit Huawei P40 Pro. Caranya, 
Pada akhir dari webinar ini akan ada questionnaire yang harus diisi. Bagi yang mengisi questionnaire tersebut bisa berkesempatan mendapatkan satu unit Huawei P40 Pro dan pemenang akan diundi secara acak. Cara untuk mengisi questionnaire, silakan klik button survei yang ada di layar monitor Anda. Dan jangan khawatir, hari ini akan ada Huawei Band 4 yang akan dibagikan. Jumlah yang akan kami bagikan untuk hari ini adalah 4 buah Huawei Band 4 kepada rekan-rekan yang menjawab pertanyaan dengan benar. Mau tahu bagaimana caranya? Caranya cukup mudah. Pertama, setiap sesi akan ada pertanyaan di bagian akhir. Bagi yang menjawab dengan benar, di kolom komentar akan dipilih secara acak untuk mendapatkan satu buah Huawei Band 4. Setelah acara webinar ini berakhir, rekan-rekan diharapkan untuk memposting tentang poin apa saja yang rekan-rekan dapatkan di media sosial masing-masing. Bagi yang mendapatkan likes lebih dari 66, akan berkesempatan mendapatkan satu buah Huawei Band 4. Dan bagi yang mendapatkan lebih dari 200 likes, akan berkesempatan mendapatkan satu buah Huawei Watch GT2 Fashion. Silakan email bukti posnya ke agata.leonita.huawei.com untuk divalidasi. Validasi kami terima paling lambat tanggal 25 Oktober 2020. Baik, sekarang kita akan melanjutkan ke topik berikutnya yaitu Optical is the new trend in campus yang akan dibawakan oleh Mr. Zhu Chow. Please welcome Mr. Zhu Chow. Today, I'm very happy to share with you our Cloud Campus 2.0. In the first session, we were talking about the terminals that we produce, which are quite tangible. But behind the ten terminals, we have connections. Even without connections, we cannot gain access to internet. We cannot gain access to cloud. Therefore, today, let's say how our Cloud Campus product can help enterprises with their digitalization transformation. We are also going to share with you our practices. Now, here comes my topic of presentation, that is Cloud Campus 2.0, which will help the um, park network enter into an age of wireless intelligence. First of all, let's see what IDC has to share. In the analysis of IDC in the year 2007, we have been entering into the first stage for digital transformation. What does it mean to all of us? I guess many of our friends have the following feelings. It is mostly about those uh, peripheral businesses of an enterprise. Say, for example, paperless business, for example, mobile business, etc. And in that uh, stage, we call it uh, digitalization 1.0. At that time, you can see that people are beginning to use IT solutions on a massive scale. Now, they become more familiar with application. Now, uh, cloud computing and big data are buzzwords at that time. Beginning from the year 2015, IDC believed that we are entering into a stage of digitalization 2.0, featuring the changes in technological innovation, that is to say, um, incremental innovation featuring uh, IoT technologies and the blockchain technology, among many others. And what are the prominent features of this age? That is to say, innovations are propping out on a more massive scale. And the, you can say at this stage, for the core business of many enterprises, begin to be become digitalized. But still, there are part of the business that remain undigitalized. It is projected that by the year of 2023, we are going to enter into the stage of digitalization 3.0. In other words, enterprises are going to realize 100% digitalization. And then we are going to see, for example, um, quantum computing, etc. Now we are in the second stage. Against such a backdrop, we are proposing our uh, Cloud Campus 2.0, which is looking forward to the future, to meet the needs of enterprises in the future. And when enterprises are carrying out the digitalization uh, revolution, you know, 
Internet is lying at the bottom, serving as the foundation. You can take a look at this slide. Now, this is a triangle with three points. At the top point, we have the physical part, that is access to all the objects on the edge. And that is used for the purpose of serving the needs of people. You need connection with people. On the right lower hand level, then you can see the cloud end, which is providing us computing capabilities represented by applications etc. Between the edge and the objects, we need interaction by perception. And also, we need smooth communication between and among people as well. On the cloud level, between different applications, we need to have computing with zero latency. Therefore, man to object have interaction requirement. And also, man to man needs smooth communication as well. Now, you can see some wearable devices, some VR and AR products are now becoming part of our life. And also, you can see some other connection requirement. Say, for example, for AI um, detection, once data is captured, it has to be sent to the cloud for a real-time calculation or computing. And there is also a need for connection between application and human beings. Now, most commonly, we see what we call co-location work or collaborative work, which needs this kind of connection. Therefore, digitalization of enterprises has brought about a lot of different challenges to us. Now, I want to share with you our insights from four different cases. The first example is about what we call a wireless or intelligence business day. Therefore, when you go into an office, you have already entered a digital environment. Once you go into the door, there should be face recognition. And after you have entered into the office, there are light control and control of temperature, among many others. There are electronic uh, printing services. There are online reservation of meeting room. And we have a high resolution or high definition uh, video conference services delivered to us. These are all part of intelligence office be, uh, space. You can also take a look at the three indicators on the right-hand side of our slide. At the present, speaking of a collaborative office, video conference has account for 80% of the collaborative uh, business. And also, nowadays, more and more enterprises are using fully wireless office. You can barely see those uh, optical fibers in the office. And thirdly, it is about uh, the growth rate of uh, the internet of, of um, terminals connected to IoT. You can see within three years' time, this penetration rate has reached 83%. Behind all these figures, there is a need for the increase in bandwidth. You know, the connection points are increasing day by day, and the connection requirement goes up day by day. To enable fully wireless intelligence office, we need to have fast and convenient access. In the same time, it needs to be safe and reliable. We don't want attacks from outside and the disruption from outside. However, speed and safety are a pair of paradox. And then here on the left-hand side of our slide, you can see this is a requirement of the some of those applications and softwares used in the um, 1.0 stage. At that time, the bandwidth is quite limited, about just uh, two megabytes or four megabytes, etc. Later on, you can say with the development of AR, VR, and also cloud-based collaboration, there is increased use increase in demand for bandwidth. And the, the third challenge lies with the operation and maintenance of networks. How can we well operate and maintain these different terminals? 
that are connected to the network. Once problems occur, how do we do troubleshooting? So you can say device increase by five times, but the manpower for operation and maintenance has increased very limitedly. So this is a pair of contradiction as well. Therefore, we are proposing Cloud Campus 2.0 to help enable a fully wireless intelligence um, office environment. Now here, we have three basic concepts to share with you. We need to have the basic bandwidth that is a foundation for everything else. And we so we are using Wi-Fi 6 technology. By using this technology, our bandwidth is several times higher than conventional ones. And secondly, we can do wireless connection or access. For one or each and every user, the bandwidth can be um, just um, one to 1 1.6 gigabyte. So it is very wide. Therefore, you can download a film or video within seconds. And then, sometimes, even if Wi-Fi is quite good in coverage, the user experience is less than satisfactory. Therefore, we need to do smart connection and access. Once the terminal is co uh, connected, there should be insensitive access. And when there, the, room, the um, rooming service is provided, there shouldn't be any latency or delay in the communication service. And thirdly, for application of my business, it should not be disrupted. Say, if I wanted to talk to my family member the, uh, quite far away, I want the quality of the video to be quite good. And we need to also do proactive maintenance and operation of the network. In the past, we do it in a passive way. We wait until problems happen. But now, through use of intelligence, we want to do it in a more proactive way and a more active manner. And through these concepts, we want to enable better solutions to our clients or to our users to give them better user experience. Once our user is connected to the internet, then we will know instantly when he has a poor experience, whether he has suffered a packet loss or not. So this is about how we help with building wireless intelligent business office environment. Secondly, is about our the application of our solution in production. Now, before the concept of a flexible production, in the past, people were talking about so-called rigid production line. Things were done in um, massive, in, in big batches with a fixed production line, producing single products. Now we want things to be customized. We want our cars, we want our bags to be different from others. So we now need a flexible production. It means the production line can be changed according to our needs. For example, we want a different color of a car, so we can change the color setting of this production line. And most of such settings is small scale. First, equipment should be wireless. Sensors of this production line should be wireless. I can give you an example. AOI, the automated optical inspection. In the past, we needed manual inspection to check the circuit boards of AOI. But now, AOI can be inspected with HD cameras. For example, we have a production line of home appliance it uses five industry cameras from top, front, back, left, and right. And photos taken should be uploaded to the cloud. We can see, as calculated, for one AOI, the bandwidth is 765 megabits a second. So five AOI may require gigabit of bandwidth. This is a big challenge. Before Wi-Fi 5, there was no such a capacity to satisfy gigabit transmission. And the second challenge comes from reliability. Because there is a continuous flow of production line, there shouldn't be any stop on the production line. So we say the reliability should be at least five nights. 
and the reliability may be compromised when everything is wireless. So how to face up to these challenges? First, we use Wi-Fi 6 AP, providing 16 spatial streams to provide double the capacity at 10.75 gigabit per second. And second, in order to reduce interference for up link backhaul, we have dual link backhaul of both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. These are some real practices in production lines. And now the change of the production line can be shortened from hours to minutes. And next, I will tell you a story about teaching and a study. Indeed, we have many such scenarios. VR and AR are used in enterprises and also in classrooms. In the past, many contents were stored locally. And it is very expensive to make VR content. A five-minute VR video may cost tens of thousands of yuan, and also it may need high-performance computing locally. So parts of the content should be put locally and the other parts on the cloud. But if we put everything on cloud, such local storage may not be needed anymore. Then let's take a look at some changes or challenges imposed by VR. The first one is terminal processing. Terminal processing requires really high definition. And the second is latency. Maybe you have such an experience when you are using VR. Things should be in real time, otherwise you may feel fainted. And the latency as written here should be minimized to less than 20 second, minute seconds, especially for wireless, because wired transmission can reach such a level, but not the same for wireless. It is difficult to make wireless latency to 10 milliseconds. Now in the industry, most of the latencies for the wireless is around 20 milliseconds. But for Huawei, we can minimize the latency to 10 milliseconds. First, we need to identify the application. First, we use neural network algorithm to know this is a VR application. And then we have accelerated scheduling of resources to guarantee VR experience. And also, I'd like to talk about intelligent ONM. We need to guarantee network experience. So intelligent ONM is needed. Here, the experience is visible by using machine learning. Everything is demonstrated. And if there is a fault or an error, we are able to locate the fault in five minutes. The last story is about finance. Every one of you has visited finance branches and banks. But maybe you haven't been there for some time. When was the last time you visited a bank branch? Now many operations are done on your phone. So banks need to change their services as well. In the past, they were setting flagship financial branches. But now they build community financial branches. But they are more of community types because they need to serve massive communities and such branches are built in smaller sizes. First, such branches need to cope with temporary financial service requirements and such rollout should be completed within one day. And second, they need to provide remote financial service. Some remote service operator can serve you just as they are in front of you to provide you in-person experience. And third, they now have a large number of scattered financial branches. How to manage so many scattered branches? This is another challenge. So we hope to help banks to build mobile, intelligent financial branches. 
Here we use 5G super uplink. It means in one hop, your service is moved to cloud. It can provide 230 megabit per second uplink bandwidth, about 20 percent higher than before. And this uplink backhaul is quite safe and secure. And we are able to provide you multiple transmission and receiving routes. At the same time, we can also use Wi-Fi 6 to cover branches, but also we can use a wired coverage. For example, we can build some intelligent exhibition hall APs to serve customers locally. And also, we can use cloud to cover both the head office and all the branches. So this is very convenient. There is no difference between the head office and the branch. Everything is managed centrally. So this is my very last story. Let's put everything together. Huawei provides Cloud Campus 2.0 solution. So how will this solution help enterprises to do digital transformation in the 2.0 age? As I've mentioned, we have three concepts of intelligence. First, we provide high bandwidth from end to end, from wireless access to wide bureau network all the way to the core. And we can also provide you guaranteed experience. When you access the network, you do not need to wait. You can use the network immediately. And the experience is guaranteed no matter you are using it in a place or you are roaming. And also, our network is autonomous. We can provide you intelligent operation and maintenance. Now, not a lot of vendors can do automatic operation and maintenance, and we are very willing to work with partners and customers to do digitization. That's all for my part. Thank you. Mr. Zuchow, Cloud Campus 2.0 bisa membantu mengaktifkan kecerdasan nirkabel sepenuhnya di lingkungan kantor dan dengan menggunakan teknologi Wi-Fi 6. Bandwidth akan menjadi beberapa kali lebih tinggi dibanding bandwidth konvensional. Presentasi dari Mr. Zuchow tadi menutup perjumpaan kita pada hari ini. Demikianlah webinar kita untuk tiga hari ini yang membahas tentang transformasi digital yang akan membawa perubahan baru di organisasi atau bisnis rekan-rekan untuk masa depan yang lebih baik. Dan Huawei Indonesia berkomitmen untuk membawa digital ke setiap orang, tempat, dan organisasi untuk terus terkoneksi. Sampai jumpa kembali di acara Huawei Connect 2021. Terima kasih untuk perhatiannya. Akhir kata, saya Rahel Solisa pamit undur diri. Stay safe and stay healthy.